Hey folks, I'm Tim Freitas from the Garden of English. I'm here to help you with everything English, especially AP English. And in the case of this video, especially AP Lang. Now, you may be just easing into your Lang year, or you might be cruising and be right in the middle of it. But no matter the case, I've got the best tips for students and teachers to not only successfully prepare for the AP exam in May, it's gonna be May. but also prepare for the world of college writing. So let's get to it. Let's get it all. As an AP Lang teacher and an AP exam reader, I consistently see the same problems in student writing when it comes to responding to the argument prompt, or more commonly known as free response question number three. Here are the issues that I see in no particular order. Number one, students often don't choose pertinent examples for their argument prompts. Number two, students are too vague with their examples when they actually write them into their arguments. Number three, students provide way too much summary of an example and not enough commentary. Number four, students struggle coming up with their own examples to support their arguments in response to the prompt that they're actually given. Just about all AP teachers will confirm that they face these struggles with their classes too. So if you're a student who faces a hard time with this as well, know that you're not alone. And today, I have a solution for students and teachers alike. Universal Evidence Logs. I'm going to show you an assignment that I have my students practice throughout the school year. Even when my class isn't studying argument, I still require students to complete these logs so that when we get to argument at the end of October, they'll have already gone through this process three to four times and will have a minimum of 36 potential examples to pull from when they start constructing their own arguments. What these logs are meant to do is create a bank of knowledge that you can refer to throughout the year as you write for your classes. And you can use these knowledge banks as a study resource the week of your exam. Hey, you can even use it and study it the night before the exam in May. For you students, if you practice this assignment every few weeks over the school year, or if you're a teacher and you assign these logs every few weeks throughout the school year, there will be a total of 64 plus precise examples for you to pick from on exam day. And that's only if you complete this process eight times over the year. Now, right before I begin, I need to shout out to my colleague, Melissa Williams at Barrington Christian Academy. She and I teamed up to create all of the examples that you're about to see. What you're about to read are all true stories and recollections from our experiences with life, media, and history. Okay, so let's check out what you can do to really help yourself become a better thinker and a better writer. You're about to see my organizer on your screen. The directions require you to reflect on meaningful, personal experiences, acquaintance experiences, media knowledge, and cultural and historical knowledge. When you write about these experiences, you're told that you have to limit your descriptions to being no longer than five sentences, but you can't write less than three. These directions are necessary because when I'm reading exams, students don't describe their examples enough for me to know exactly what's going on. Or scholars describe events in too much detail and they waste way too much time writing summaries and details and they completely neglect their commentary in relation to their argument. Well, the best way to make sure this doesn't happen is to follow the directions that are given. And they're easy to remember because you want to score between a three and a five on your AP exam because those are qualifying scores. So three to five sentence examples are what will help. But just writing three to five sentence examples isn't going to necessarily revolutionize your responses right away. So I need you to notice a few other things going on in this chart and in the directions. First, each column asks you to describe something specific, something concrete. This means that something actually happened and can be tangibly experienced. Nothing in this chart is hypothetical. Even if you write about something fictional in the media knowledge column, those events might not have really happened in real life, but they do exist in some form of TV or radio or literature. All tangible forms of media. You can experience them with any of your five senses. Hypothetical examples are like vacuums. They really suck. So try not to use them. Second, the directions not only require three to five sentences, but they require you to focus on your use of verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. Now, if you can do that and precisely use advanced punctuation, you'll be in even better shape. The more precise you are with the language that you choose, the better. You'll also have more of an opportunity to earn the sophistication point in the argument essay if you practice by creating these evidence logs. This is because you're beginning to make effective rhetorical choices that consistently strengthen the force and impact of your argument. Practice this all year and you'll most likely have mastered the precision writing needed to earn the point. Then you'll be able to ride off into the sunset on that unicorn. So let's take a quick peek at one of my examples from the chart and let's see how I fit all of the above requirements. I'm going to look at my example in the cultural knowledge column. 
So let's check it out. In September of 2001, a terrible tragedy occurred. A plane had gone off course and hit one of the World Trade Center buildings. Immediately, it seemed as though the whole nation had become informed and citizens began tuning into their news stations. While the nation was hypnotized, longing for more information about the disaster, just later that morning, those watching witnessed a second horror when another plane hit the second World Trade Center tower. Before this time, it seemed as though the initial crash was potentially accidental. However, the second plane made it quite clear that this was no mistake. America had been attacked, and everyone knew it. Notice that my description of this terrible tragedy is four sentences. This is practically Goldilocks. Not too long, not too short. Remember, three to five sentences is what you're shooting for. My verbs, adjectives, and adverbs are incredibly strong. I chose words and phrases like terrible tragedy, occurred, gone off course, informed, tuning into, longing, hypnotized, watching, witnessed, and attacked. And even my noun choices were strong too. Tragedy, citizens, disaster, and horror. Mmm, delicious writing. Especially with my proper use of semicolons and colons. You'll notice that I haven't provided topic sentences or commentary for any of the examples in the log. That's because you don't have a prompt to respond to yet. And the point of this exercise isn't to teach you about creating topic sentences and extrapolating your commentary. I've got other videos and playlists for that. This assignment is about building your knowledge bank. Once you've begun growing your wealth of knowledge, you can look up past AP Lang prompts. I've got them linked right in the video description down below. You can read the prompts and see which of your stories may be able to work for the different prompts that are available to you. For example, my ridiculous personal example about the monkey bars could easily have been used if I were writing the 2012 Certainty and Doubt prompt. The O.J. Simpson example could also work incredibly well for it. The story about Jen and her neighbor could function well in an argument about the value of exploring the unknown. That was the topic of the 2018 prompt. And the Zamperini example could work for a prompt like the 2017 Civil Disobedience and Progress prompt, depending on how you wanted to structure your argument. Just think though, going through this process is meant to not only help your writing, but also help you dig through the caverns of your mind so that you can mine your experiences for all they're worth. Don't think you don't have experience in the real world. You do. All right, so going through this process is the best way to prepare for anything the argument prompt will throw at you during the exam. It's not too early to start this. It's also not too late. It's also the best way to practice precise writing. If you're interested in gaining access to my organizer that I've shown you in this video with directions and examples, you can check out the student or teacher links in the description right down below the video. Students, your link will direct you to sign up for a free trial of my comprehensive exam review guide. You'll gain free access to all of my Unit 1 exclusive study videos, study notes, answer guides, practice multiple choice questions, and yes, even ones that correlate with U.S. History unit timelines. You'll also gain access to all of my guided notes and answers for my rhetorical analysis videos on YouTube. Those will help you follow along to own that essay. And teachers, your link will direct you to sign up for a free informational course about other GOE offerings. I'll not only hook you up with this organizer, but also a free AP Lang Unit 1 rhetorical situation test and answer key. In fact, let's make that two of them. If you want even more help writing arguments, I've linked a full argument playlist in the description right down below with everything else. And now that you've begun to build your argument example banks, you can check out my videos about how to include them in your argument essays. And they're gonna pop up right about now.